Hey guys, John Faulkner here with Survival Dispatch, and today I'm going to introduce you to an event that we did back in September 6th and 7th. Uh, five of us went out for a 48-hour, uh, no tools, no nothing survival challenge. Uh, we were up in Epworth, Georgia. It's on the Appalachian Trail. Uh, me, Chris Weatherman, Alan Kay, and then we were joined by two guests uh, of Alan's great guys, Jason Salier and Jason Patrick, and uh, fantastic guys. Uh, super squared away and funny guys to be around with. And I'll tell you guys, you know, we uh, we had a fantastic time doing this. It was difficult from time to time, um, but it was pretty much 48 hours with absolutely nothing but the clothes that we had on us with the stipulation that we could not use our clothes as tools also. So, you know, there wasn't, you know, cutting cutting shirts and making char cloth or anything like that. Um, but within the 48 hours, we were able to build a shelter large enough for five guys, uh, get a fire started with nothing but what we found, uh, you know, in the woods, uh, get water. We were able to find a small little uh, spring that we were able to get enough water for the five of us uh, through. Uh, and then we did things like, you know, we made a bowl out of some white pine bark. So we were able to transport water, which you'll start to see as a, a very big thing. Uh, without having tools, you know, a lot of phrases were said like, hey, can you pass me the good rock? Uh, you know, hold on, let me make a little bit more cordage for you. Um, so we really started to, to find, you know, how just small, you know, little tools. Man, if we just had one knife within our campsite, how much easier it would have been. But how you can get things done like boiling water, we were able to get that done with no tools on hand at all. So we're going to have a couple part series here. We really hope you enjoy it and, uh, you know, come along for the ride and see how we got through 48 hours with no tools. So we're out on our fire walk and what we're looking for first is tinder. Uh, this is a tulip poplar. So if you look here, you can see, even though there's leaves coming out of this, that the bark is slipping. So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of on its way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we don't have knives, we're just gonna peel upward like that. And we're gonna strip these fibers out and then abrade them until they become hair-like and we're going to make a bird nest. So that'll check the box on our tender. Um, and then we have, to, we have to find some type of wood that's going to be good at friction. And I don't have any tools, so I also don't have fingernails. So I'm probably just going to take these strips and twist them up and put them in my pocket. And I'll refine them later. All right, so you'll recognize that from earlier. That's our Wacomatic 5000, the tool, the preferred tool of North Georgia. So I'm gonna use that to hopefully, see that part's green and this part's dead, that's interesting. But you can still see how this, the leaves are here, so part of this is still alive. So I guess I'm only gonna get sections out of this particular piece. But I'll take what I can get and we'll keep looking for for other sections see that's nice and sharp you can see how that cuts all the way down into that that inner bark layer so we'll just keep working and we'll look for some other sources too and keep adding it to the pile perfect perfect Ta -da! A little wet, but eh, actually that's not bad but we could let it dry out that's not a bad thing focus on this upper part that wasn't wicking up all the moisture yeah and let me put my wet plastic 5000 and uh, even the wet stuff we could take but just not use it right now but see these fibers like that is super that that blonde color is actually good to make cordage out of but not as good as some yucca that we spotted so i'll just go with that and i want to try to get the longest pieces i can that's not always possible but but even the wet stuff, you can sometimes uh, dry it out in the sun, you know, mm -hmm. and it'll work pretty good. But where it starts to get spotted in there, it's not very strong. And when it gets really dark, like chocolate colored, then you know it's pretty weak. Well, we so I have to take a rock and scrape some of that off. So I can tell that this is going to make good tinder here because when I rough it up like this, it stays together and doesn't just break. It's not so brittle and not so old that it stays together and I could pull off long strips 
like that. And those are a little bit damp right now, but because it's a beautiful sunny day, as this dries out, it'll make a nice, nice tinder bundle later today. Yep. Oh, that's the good stuff right there. Yeah, I'm on. This is like John Wayne would have done it if he were here with if us. If John Wayne was here, Clint Eastwood would have done it a little differently, I think. Well, you know. But John Wayne. To each his own. <laughs> yeah, this is good stuff. Yeah, some of this is eh, marginal, but yeah. whatever. It's See, there's some good long strips we can take out and strip them and put them in the sun. Yeah. We'll save it. Can't be too choosy. Sometimes you're just stuck. Stuck with what you got, you know? How's that multi-tool working? It's something. We, we're about, since we're by the creek, we should probably made a, maybe fashion a couple more of those. See, but right there, that, that's good to go. Feel how dry that yeah, is. that's great. But maybe sometimes, you know, if it don't peel, like this is not peeling, but it will scrape. So if we just do a scraping action, we can get at some good fiber. Yep. Some days they're diamonds, other days they're stones. This is actually really, really, really dry. I can feel it as it comes off. Yeah, this is this is actually really good. For being on the ground. And right? some of those longer fibers we can just abrade down yep. later in our hands or whatever. You know one thing about it, uh, we're so used to instant gratification. People in survival circles and prepper circles just whip out a ferro rod, whip out a big lighter. And you should, you should always have that stuff with you, but this romantic notion of going out in the woods and living like Stone Age man is bullshit because nothing comes easy out so here. So slow. You have to, you, yeah, there is no instant gratification. You have to fight and scrape yep. and claw for every little thing that you do. I, I would have had a fire hours ago. Oh, with a big I, lighter, yeah. <laughs> with a lighter, yeah. You take a bundle of sticks, you light it with the lighter, fire. Well, that's, now we're scraping logs off the ground to get some tinder. Really, all, for me, all that the, the primitive stuff does is it reinforces, there's some more dry. How, how important it is to have How important to have yeah. your knife, you know. Yeah. Like this is why I don't, I don't go check the mail without a Glock, a knife, a lighter. I mean, I just, that's the part of getting dressed. How easy is life? Yeah, you gotta be with ready. A, with a poncho, a lighter, and a... Another thing <laughs> is natives, indigenous people didn't come out into the woods with nothing. Yeah. They were born into a material culture you know, grandfather, father, they already had the, the tools made yeah. and they learned and they, they always carried the stuff. Yeah. In the quiver, we would have a hand drill set already made. They carried their lighter, which yeah, was a hand they, drill exactly. or a bow drill or something, yeah. They didn't wait until, didn't oh. go out and do it. I need a fire, I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna go gather this stuff, yeah. I'll, I'll go find sticks now. That hurry. would be stupid. Because they, if it was raining right now, yeah. then we'd have no chance. <laughs> yeah, they were yeah. definitely planners and forward thinking. Yeah. But these are fun experiments to do. It just reinforces the, the importance of, uh, preparation which yeah. is kind of where i'm at in my life i'm more about preparation and less about the survival stuff that's a little wet wet pile yeah wet pocket yep gonna look like a mess of my pants <laughs> <laughs> he's had an involuntary bowel movement what have you done with him man that spring water did something yeah, something me, in that water boy <laughs> another plan well executed Capital. Steady. Steady, man. Look here. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indubitably. <laughs> yes. Yes, glad. So very, very glad. You see what I'm doing here? I'm doing it in the sunshine, so it's drying it. I planned that. Yeah, I, I thought, know you did. I thought that through. I felt that when you did it. I don't have to explain this stuff to you. You get it. I get it. You, <laughs> you get me. And that's... I know. What I love about you. I know. It's like it's like I know you. <laughs> so these these more damp pieces that I got earlier, I'm just gonna hang up here uh, and let the wind and the sun work on them. And then if we need another tender bundle in the next day or so, I'll be able to come back and. Uh, get this stuff. But by putting it off the ground like this, 
that'll help it to dry out and this should be enough for a halfway decent bundle even if it falls and hits the deck it's going to be better than being out in the woods because this will at least get sun even on the ground so what we're going to do here is we're going to lay this stick down that we found see how it keeps it up off the ground this is the driest bits of stuff that we had we're going to leave it in the sunlight here while we go look for the rest of our kit and we'll set ourselves up for success with the driest tender bundle possible Pretty pliable. There we go. That's what we want. <laughs> That's the way I like to get it. That's one good technique. You get the longer strip sometimes until it runs off like that. If you catch it when it's, of course, this is bone dry. If it's a little bit of moisture, you can. I pulled off 12 foot strips doing that. Oh wow. So a lot of times when we read in survival manuals or you hear people talk, they they'll talk about a material. They'll say, "We'll just grab uh, poplar bark." and you can make rope you can make tender but what we have to keep in mind these things are organic material and you find them at various stages of decomposition you know this i'm making into tender you notice the blonde color this would have been perfect to make rope out of that's that's best case scenario for for poplar bark as far as cordage goes um, but we have yucca now this is also poplar bark but you see how far gone that is it just kind of disintegrates so not all materials are created equal. When we're looking for this stuff, we want the blonde color, that blondish hue, as opposed to a gray or a chocolatey color. Uh, you want this or maybe even into a light gray if you're gonna consider it for cordage because it's just not strong enough once it decays past this point. And even this piece here is not even suitable for tender because instead of the bark slipping away, from the outer bark for tender you can get a little bit there but most of it's just going to crumble and it's going to be short pieces and that was a tactical cartwheel done by j3 our resident ninja we found some beautiful tender look at the color of that that's perfect yeah man that's good yeah that would even be good cord yep but we're going to tenderize that this piece here and not all of it slipping but enough what he's got and what I've got and what's laying on the ground. You found some too? Oh yeah. Well, oh, yours, you see the quality difference? Yep. Mine's a little bit chocolatey. This is, uh, this is Kmart. Kmart. <laughs> this is Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, but Kmart will do, I guess. It'll work. <laughs> 